Coming up, Google takes Nexus one step farther. We'll talk about two hot new tablets, the WTV Play, the world's little teeniest book reader. Wow. The Kobo. And I've got a review of the Roku 3. It's time to watch before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. And buy stamps.com. Use stamps.com to buy and print real U.S. postage the instant you need it right from your desk. For our special offer, go to stamps.com, click the microphone, and enter before you buy. Hey, 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 welcome to Before You Buy, the uh, Twit product review show where we get a lot of great products in. We ask our staff to take a look at them and give you the bottom line. Try, buy, or don't buy. Uh, our producer, Shannon Morse, is here. Snubs. Hello, Snubs. Hello, Leo. Hello. Host Hello. of uh, Threat Level, Threat Wire. Threat Wire. Threat Wire. Threat on, Level is on Wired or something. Yeah, that's the Wired blog. You're right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Threat Wire. On the, the tech channel, Tech Feed. Yes. YouTube.com slash Tech Feed. That's correct. She also uh, is the producer of this show and hosts uh, many other shows on the Twit Network in my dreams. Oh, yes. But first. <laughs> it will happen. <laughs> soon, I hope. We're working on some, actually. Mm -hmm. First, I wanted to uh, get your review of this new Dell. It's the Inspiron 15Z. First of all, who is this uh, laptop for? Is it a desktop replacement, it looks like. It is definitely a desktop replacement. It's not something that I would necessarily travel with, although they do uh, say that this is an Ultrabook. It weighs about what? five pounds. That's nervy. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. It's not an Ultrabook. It weighs way too much to take with yeah. you on an airplane, yeah. believe me. Um, so about the insides of this little guy, the one that I am running is a Core i5. This is the 33i7U processor, okay. uh, the third generation. They also have a new upgraded version, which is the 3337U. So you can get a little bit faster gigahertz for actually $100 less than this original one. Well, I'm confused. It costs less to get more? It costs less to guess, right. get more. Yeah, right. they actually dropped the price. So uh, this one right here is on sale right now on Dell.com for $799. Well, that's it a good price. It was originally $899. Okay. Yeah. How, Under $1, how high res is that screen? It how only goes up to 1366 by <sighs> 768 so it's 720 I hate it when they do that. Yeah, so it's uh, it's 15 inches. It's yeah, a for a screen that size, I'd like to see screen. a higher res. I would really like yeah. a higher screen because I think it would look much much better. It looks kind of cartoonish at right. this size, and that's actually one of my cons to to actually speak of. Um, a couple of other things to note about it: it's got a nice little 500 gig hard drive inside of it, as well as a 32 gig solid state. So you're gonna have well, that nice rapid. Uh, rapid uh, uh, reboot time so you don't have to worry about that and it also comes with that nice uh, six gigs of ram instead of four gigs which is kind of unusual for this type of uh, for that ultra price, book. yeah yeah i would expect it to be four gigs but they actually upgraded to six gigs mm -hmm. which is nice it's windows 8 just the normal version it's not pro and it also has bgnn wireless as well as bluetooth you mentioned it's a touchscreen let me see the the uh, the tiles press so, the windows button let's see how it how responsive it is. Bam. Now slide those around because I, I, yeah. Now yeah, one thing, pretty, pretty one thing snappy, I liked yeah. about this, you may look at this and say, oh, that bezel is huge. Right. Uh, that's a lot of black space, but it's it's covered in Gorilla, ga gr gorilla Glass from edge to edge. So you're not going to have any kind of uh, lip, lip here to deal with whenever you're trying to get to your charms bar. Plus you slide in from the side so often, out. a little bit of a bezel do. doesn't bother me because it kind of gives you a target for yeah, you. Yeah, and I think that was really smart of yeah. Dell to do this so you don't have any kind of problems getting your finger over that lip. Right. You're so right, though, about the cartoony icons. I mean, those are so big yeah, on that screen. it's just huge. Screen, yeah. And I'm at the highest resolution, 1366, right. 768. It's not that great. I really wish they would have gone with a higher resolution. How's the keyboard the keyboard is on awesome it's a regular size keyboard it's backlit it also has spill proof so you, no worries about spilling anything on it i love that it's backlit um i hate it whenever you get an ultra book that doesn't include that uh, it's also it's kind of hard 
So when you're typing on it, firm hard. It's firm hard, yeah. Not and I'm actually hard. I'm I'm a pretty firm typer, so right. this doesn't doesn't bother me that much, but it might bother some other people. Um, their touchpad right here, it does have a lip on it. So whenever you're trying to get to your charms bar, you have to take it kind of slow. Right. You can't be quick about it, or it's not going to be responsive mm. with that. Okay. So it's a little bit tricky to get your hands on that. A um, couple of other things to note. It has a nice little webcam right here. I actually took a picture or two, if I can get to those. Where's my camera? So there's a picture of me. Yeah. Isn't it beautiful? It's very grainy. It's very manga. Very grainy. <laughs> your eyes are there's huge. There's me squishing Jeff's head. Yeah. Can you go up? Hi. Okay, Hi. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't really like the camera that much. Um, another thing to mention, it uses Skull Candy speakers, and it gets really, really loud, but it's kind of muffled when you get to the highest uh, the highest uh, speakers. Speaker are ported system. on the uh, on the side there, it looks like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's... Or the bottom. They're right here. The bottom, the bottom. okay. There's okay. one right there and then one right here, right. and it has a little Skull Candy logo on it, so you don't forget. Right. Because we couldn't afford Beats. Of course. Yeah. Uh, the battery lasts around four to five hours. Uh, unfortunately, on their website, they tote seven hours, but I couldn't get it up to that time. Maybe when you put it to sleep, it lasts seven hours, <laughs> but not for me. It was only about four to five, okay. um, which is still pretty average for right. the mainstream, yeah. especially in this price point. So that's not really a con issue with it. Um, few other things to mention. Uh, the weight, of course, it's five pounds. It's, uh, what else is there? Oh, there's the thinness of it, too. I should it's mention. Not, which is not, as in, not that thin. Yeah, it's a it's little not, bit boy, less than one It sure doesn't feel inch. like an Ultrabook to me. A little that bit feels less like than a one notebook. Inch. And then it has all USB 3.0, thank okay, God. Okay, good. So it must be an Ivory Bridge. It comes uh, with a nice little DVD writer. And here. you have an optical drive. You good. do, yeah. All right, all right. has the ST port, of, of course. So, so really, this add. is just a lightweight desktop replacement is yeah. what it is. HDMI on there? HDMI, full HDMI. So you don't That's have nice. to deal with micro, this would be a good you student. do with the Acer Looks ones. like it would be a good student machine, maybe. Yeah, yeah. it definitely would be. Um, it does have... A plasticky top to it. Which is buckling as you touch it. Yeah, watch that. Wow. Isn't that funny? Okay. And also, that's right a place here you could store bottom, something in the top if I there. Tilt this upside down. Yeah. It buckles right here as well, okay. right underneath the CD yeah. RW player. And that's, um, I would say that's because it's made of plastic around here. And then it also has metal around the edges. Okay. So. Pros and cons. Pros and cons of this guy. Uh, the pros would be the really responsive screen and the touchpad it's pretty responsive as far as like the mouse goes mm -hmm. i noticed on some lenovo's that i've tried the touchpad isn't that great so props on that even though there's a lip and then the price for the specs you get really really good specs for less than a thousand bucks i like it's the ssd it's not a books. huge ssd but at least yeah. it's something yeah exactly and then the cons of course um the brightness of this screen is not that great and the resolution of course which i mentioned yeah the speakers which sound kind of tinny you're muffled at when you get them too loud and then it's heavy it's five pounds so i wouldn't call it an ultra book no. but you know some people some people would so all in all, I have to give this a try. I think it would be a really good desktop replacement if you're not planning to move it around from place to place. But if you do plan to travel with something, I would choose something else. Yeah, yeah, especially because of that buckling lid. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Shannon, it's the Dell Inspiron 15Z. Starts around $700 yep. uh, dollars for Just a pretty well-equipped machine, actually. All right. Thank you so much, Shannon, produces uh, this show. Uh, Ayaz Akhtar gave us a review of uh, this little unit. Actually, this is going to kind of be a uh, an interesting comparison to the Roku 3 we're going to review later in the show. This is Western Digital's WDTV Play. Let's take a look. I'm Ayaz Akhtar with Twit, and today I'm taking a look at the WDTV Play. That's this little guy. This is effectively a $70 network streamer, and it handles a lot of online services. A lot of people think... This device is head-to-head -head up against the Roku, and it pretty much is. At $70, it's very low cost, and it runs a bunch of apps. You can see that on the screen here. This is our favorites page. It shows you a bunch of default things. We've got weather, we've got our storage, uh, you've got some special offers. YouTube, an app you won't find on Roku, is available. Also Spotify, Netflix, Hulu Plus. These kinds of things are available on the WD TV Play, which is a bit of a mouthful. When you get the device, it comes with a remote with dedicated buttons for Hulu Plus, Netflix, and Vudu. Uh, if, you have, if you've been wondering, hey, where's Amazon on this? 
there is no Amazon video on demand service available on this product, uh, which is a bit of a downer. But as you've noticed with uh, the device, I have a USB device into here because this play can handle local storage as well as network storage. So if you have a bunch of things on a media server, you can access it with your WD TV play. Now I love to test out big freaking files. So I'm gonna test out a MKV of a Blu-ray rip of some of the movies I have. So right now I went into the My Storage application and I navigated to a UPnP server I have on the network. The WDTV Play will access DLNA and UPnP sources. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to try to play one of my movies. Let's go with Iron Man. This is an over 20 gigabyte MKV. Now you're gonna see how long it takes to load, just a tiny bit of time. And this is going over my network. So it took about three to five seconds for the actual video to start from once we selected it. So what's going on, you can see the playback is very smooth. I've gotta say that the WDTV Play, again, a mouthful of a name, this device has handled MKVs admirably. Unfortunately, there's no DTS decoding on board. So if you have a DTS audio source like on your Blu-ray, you won't be able to hear that. Now, it does do pass-through DTS, which means your receiver can decode it if your receiver does that. In my case, my receiver can't do that, so some of my MKVs don't have audio. The device is very responsive to every remote press I've done, play, pause, skip forward. It does a great job with that. It's pretty snappy, even with these monstrous files going over the network. I mean, there's no way, I mean, I don't think you would even notice that this is not the Blu-ray that's playing back. It's running through that tiny box. Now, the WD TV Play supports a lot of different files. It does not support DivX, which is a little bit of a downer as well. So no DTS decoding and no DivX support. It also does not play back video TS folders. So unless you have ISOs of your DVDs, you won't be able to play them back. Audio, it handled everything I threw at it, but I only have a couple of formats, MP3s, M4As, and they worked fine. As for the other apps that are on this device, there is a Netflix application. It's not anything spectacular. It's very reminiscent of every other Netflix application. Perhaps it best resembles the PS3. And you can see it takes a little bit for it to actually connect to the Netflix application. Like I said, very PS3-like, and it does a decent job. The Hulu Plus application, also very stock. Doesn't seem to be customized at all for the WD TV Play. So it's very similar to the Roku application or even Hulu Plus desktop. Let's watch some playback of SNL starring Justin Timberlake, that man of many talents and new MySpace backer. So what I've been doing is I've been controlling the play using the iOS app. WD actually puts out applications, so if you wanna use a device like an iOS device, you can control your play without needing line of sight, which is always a pleasant experience. The remote itself is kind of ugly and it's built for a smaller iOS device. I'm using it on an iPad, so it's a little blown up, but it does work very well. You have access to all the services. So instead of you having to go through all the menus throughout the on-screen display, you can just go and find them and go, I'm gonna launch Netflix from here and it'll work that way behind me. So it's actually very powerful when you don't wanna use the on-screen menu. Let's talk about the pros and cons of this device. Pros, local and network video support. That is something that just outshines the Roku completely. If you have network video and they're in the right format, the Play will handle that very well. It handles giant files over the network, great. The MKVs played excellent. We're talking 20, 30 gigabyte files running fine. There's also Sling Player and YouTube apps. So if you have a Sling box you wanna to connect to, you could use the Play to get that Sling content. There's also Wi-Fi built in, so that's another plus. On the cons, there's no DTS decoding and no DivX support. So if you have files with those codecs, you're not gonna be able to listen or watch them. The app selection is a bit small. There is no app store. The way you get new applications is via firmware updates. So is the Play a try, buy, or don't buy? It's definitely a try. At $70, you have a lot of different powerful options on this device. If you have a bunch of stuff on your network, it's definitely a very good device for that. Although, I would have liked to see some more support for things like DTS and DivX, because let's be serious, if you're using something like the Play, you might be a bit of a nerd like me or you.
He is a nerd. That's Ayaz Akhtar, <laughs> host of TNT, and of course our know-how host. He's going to be reviewing a popcorn hour. Uh, I know the chat room was asking about that. Uh, a little later on, he has the new popcorn hour. It's interesting because this is cheaper than the Roku. I'm going to show the Roku 3 in just a little bit. has some additional features the Roku doesn't have, but there's a lot in common as mm -hmm. well. We'll take a look at the Roku 3, an alternative, a little more expensive alternative to the WTV WDTV play uh, a little later on. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we've got some tablets for you and the world's smallest ebook reader. I can't believe the size of this thing. Before we do that, though, let me show you audible.com. I don't have to tell you what Audible is. I shouldn't have to. If you've watched our network, you know many of us are massive fans of You Are You're Nodding, Shannon, oh, yeah. audiobooks. What are you to listening to? Book. It's called Love in the Afternoon. <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> is it romantic? Yes. Is it sexy? Not yet. Not yet. But it's supposed to be. Oh, how fun. Love in the yeah. afternoon. Mm. I'm not going to listen to that in public. Mm. <laughs> I love audiobooks. I really do. And, uh, you know, any kind of audiobook. And Audible has them all over 100,000 titles. Fiction, nonfiction, romance, yes, thrillers, mysteries. Uh, I listen to a lot of history and biography because I feel I want to feel like I'm using my time well. But then, you know, I intersperse that with some great science fiction. There's lots of it at audible.com. Right now I'm reading that Patrick Rothfuss uh, trilogy. The first two books are available. And when Patrick finishes the third, I'm sure it'll be available as well. The King Killer Chronicles. You probably heard us talk about The Name of the Wind. Uh, just really wonderful books. You can get one of these books free, whether it's Love in the Afternoon uh, or The Shining. They've got great Stephen King novels. Just visit audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. And you'll be signing up for the um, gold account. That's a book of a book a month subscription. But your first 30 days are free. Your first book is free. You cancel any time in that first 30 days. You pay nothing. The book is yours to keep forever. I don't think you're going to want to cancel. Audible is an amazing thing. And check out the Audible apps on your iPhone, your Android device, your Windows phone, even on Windows 8 now. Audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. Love in the afternoon, huh? Mm -hmm. I got it for free on Valentine's Day. Aww, they had a promotion going. Oh, isn't that romantic? Yeah. Oh, that's cute. Does your fiance listen to Audible books? Not yet. You better get, get them listening. It, yeah, because, uh, you know, you got to, you know, it's great when you have the little ones, the kids. Oh, yeah. And you take a, a road trip. Have There are some wonderful books. I remember doing this with Abby and Henry for kind of uh, kids, but they're like Bud Not Buddy, great book. And we listened to it. We talked about it. Man, it makes those road trips so much more fun when Aww. you're all on the same page, so to speak. That's cool. Loved it. Audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. Tony Wang, he's the editor-in-chief. He's somewhere around here. But we asked him to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did he laugh when you gave him this, uh, Shannon? The world's tiniest. He looked at it and he was like, oh, I'm fixing it's, my pocket. It, well, that's the advantage. <laughs> it's the Kobo Mini. Let's see what Tony thought. I'm Tony Wayne for Twitter TV. And before you buy, and today I'm going to take a look at the Kobo Mini e ink reader. The Kobo Mini is actually a very compact e ink reader. It is much smaller than your standard size Kindle e ink reader. And just for comparison, it's shorter than a Galaxy Note and just barely wider than a Galaxy Note. So uh, what do you get from the Kobo Mini? You get uh, a Wi-Fi enabled five inch display e-ink reader. And out of the box, the most noticeable factor of this e-ink reader is the size. I mean, it is uh, as, as thick as a mobile phone and it's not that much wider. So it's actually very easy to hold. Uh, 4.7 ounces, so it's very light, and uh, you can throw it in your bag and you don't even know it's there. The Kobo comes with a touchscreen display and is very responsive, and I don't have any issues uh, getting it to turn pages. Although there are some ghosting going on after a few pages, but it's pretty common in e-readers. If you're interested in reading non-DRM materials such as EPUB, uh, this would be a good reader for you. If you're interested in subscribing to newspaper or magazines, you can actually try them on your Kobo Mini for 14 days free before you buy. And just like the Kindle readers, you can download the software for your Kobo on your Android and your iOS devices and even your desktop. So you don't even have to have your Kobo Mini with you to read your books. One of the concerns I have about the Kobo Mini is that it has two gigabyte built-in storage, but only half of that is available for you to store books. So you're looking at about a thousand books. The display on the Kobo Mini is 
what they call the Pearl e-ink display. So for all intended purposes, this is just a standard e-ink display. There's nothing, there's no backlight, so it doesn't light up or anything. The battery life is obviously amazing, just like all other e-ink reader out there, such as Sony and Kindle. And the standby time is about a month, just like the industry standard. And they even try to add a little flare to the e-ink reader with a built-in uh, removable backing, so you can change the color of your e-ink reader. The Kobo Mini is reasonably priced at $79, so it's very competitive with other e-ring readers out there. Now for the pros of the device, this thing is so small, it can actually fit in my pants pocket. And the con of the Kobo is that their library is just not as big as Amazon, which has been established long before these guys, and way bigger. And with Amazon Prime, you can rent a book uh, a month for free. So buy, try, or don't buy, I'm gonna go ahead and give this device a try. It's definitely worth going to the store and picking one up. Just hold it in your hand and see how it feels in your hand. Read a few pages and see if this is the device for you. I'm Tony for Twitter TV, and before you buy, and this is the Kobo Mini. It is kind of tiny, I like that. You just pop it right in your shirt pocket and <laughs> have it with you. Although these e-ink uh, screens are not invulnerable. A good shot to this, it'd be, ru it'd be ruined, so you might want to keep it somewhere a little bit more secure than that <laughs> thank you tony wang editor-in-chief at twit.tv now our uh, esteemed it guy is here from exponentia systems it's exponentia.com yeah, exponentia.com yeah russell tammany we would not be able to get on the air without this guy but uh, and so I don't. I hope you didn't take any time reviewing this. This is actually your own Nexus this, Ten. This is actually yeah. So this is the Google Nexus Ten. We've been hearing so much about um, this because it's such high resolution. Yes, and that's really the key feature of this screen, and it's sort of what took me to uh, purchase it over with the other Android. Was there a long wait to get it? Is it in uh, stock now? It is in stock now, but yeah. um, sometimes it's kind of come on the store and been there for a couple Briefly. hours, yeah. and then it goes away again, yeah. then it comes back. So one of the times that it. Uh, kind of came around I just decided to buy it and you know, <laughs> and you I, got it and I got it so uh, so it's a 10 inch t uh, Android 4. Point it's a 10 inch Android 4.22 two 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 two, latest whatever, Android whatever the latest Android is because it's can a have Nexus. it on the Nexus right um, so Boy, the great thing about screen. it is that the screen is 2560 by 1600 oh, wait a minute 2560 yes. by 16 compare that so, to the 1366 geez. by 768 of the 15 right. inch screen Shannon was looking at wow right. holy so cow look at the, the resolution that uh, you know <sighs> as a photographer like I like to load my full-size images on this how's the color reproduction what really good it's not only merely resolution so, it's also how accurate it is right so this is actually a little bit muted um, the saturation's a little bit low but it's very accurate uh, seeming better than um, say an OLED screen where it would be overly saturated yeah, so and, I prefer so this is not um, it's about 300 DPI, so it's very high resolution. The color gamut is sort of a little compressed, yeah. and it's a little muted, but I prefer that look because it's kind of what you're going to get out of a print right? as opposed to the OLED, you know, everything is orange and super bright, uh, you know, oversaturated screens. I got to say, given how many pixels you're pushing when you slide those around, it is very fast. Yeah. Must so, be a quad core. Uh, it's actually a dual core. It's dual a core, uh, really? Samsung Exynos uh, 1.7. It's not even that uh, fast, huh? It's, well, 1.7 is actually pretty fast. Okay. So for single-threaded, uh, you know, Android applications, they actually run very, very quickly. Um, That's a good point. Multi-core doesn't help you right. if you're just flipping pixels. Right. So yeah. I, I would prefer a uh, dual-core 1.7 over a quad-core, like 900 or something. Right, right. So, um, pretty typically 1.4 to 1.5 nowadays in the quad-core. Right. And so the, the other screen. nice thing about this screen is that you've got a 16 to 10 ratio. So because it's 2560 by 1600. Widescreen. Um, it's widescreen. But what's important is that it leaves enough space. So now that Google has switched to the... Uh, you know, on screen, back and home and switching buttons and the little notification bar at the top. You need that it, room. It means you actually have 16.9, right. uh, give or take a couple pixels. That's where the black bars would be. Yeah, that's kind of where the black bars would be. So yeah. um, it's really a, uh, a very fast tablet. Everything performs great on it. How much memory in that? Um, this is one of the issues. So because this is a Nexus, it's got 16 gigs. Um, or storage. 32 gigs yeah. of storage. Uh, does yeah, it have got, an SD card slot? It does not have an SD card slot. Uh, so the issue of Nexus is that Google's decided, kind of across all their Nexus devices, that it was complicated for users to store things on their SD card. Right. And it, it really was. I mean, you would save your pictures, and then w did this app put them on the SD card? Did this app put them in the internal right. storage? And instead of kind of fixing the operating system to make that very clear, <laughs> they, just turned, it they just turned it off and, and physically <laughs> removed your ability to right, do that. Right. Um, and unfortunately, 
uh, they also removed your ability to even using a, uh, a USB OTG cable to use mass storage. There's so, no OTG capability. There is an OTG capability, but it doesn't work with storage devices. Ah. So, you know, because so this is a So that's the Nexus, cable that turns the micro USB into a standard full-size USB as, as, a, uh, as a master. Correct. So that you could theoretically plug in an external hard drive, right. except that it doesn't work. It, it doesn't work for storage. <laughs> so it works for mouse, keyboard, uh, my... Uh, <laughs> My Canon camera will actually plug in and use DSLR. Interesting. Remote, so that does great. work. Okay. Um, but, you know, you can put, because this is a Nexus, you can unlock it. You can put your custom ROMs on. Okay. Um, you can get that feature back. You can pretty much do whatever you want. But I wanted to have the Nexus experience right. of the latest Google software, nothing else um, on it. Uh, so uh, the other issue is that... Uh, you don't really have any 3G or 4G options. This is sold Wi-Fi only. There is, uh, wow. So okay. you, you go to Google and they've got just a 16 and a 32. Uh, right. The 16 gig is 399 and the 32 is um, 499. Well, the price isn't too bad. So the price is and they are not in too stock bad. It's a little bit now, premium. So and yeah. you know my, my main issue is that if they're going to sell you the extra 32 gigs, they're charging you $100 for that extra 16, 16 gigabytes right. of extra It doesn't storage. cost them that much. It does not cost them that much. Yeah. So I purchased the um, 16 gig version because I'm streaming everything with right. uh, Subsonic or D-Sub or Google Play or uh, you know one of the other cloud services. So a um, couple other things about it. Um, it's got really nice speakers right here in the front. Uh, so you have speakers on the left and the right side. Stereo. Uh, they're stereo and they're facing you. And, um, you know, it's not great, but compared to a lot of other tablets, um, you know, like the Microsoft Surface and even the iPad, like, you know, the sound is sort of... You wouldn't want to listen to music, you but you can listen, listen to, to music, you can watch YouTube videos, listen to books. You can watch YouTube books, videos, kind of and yeah. it makes playing a game, you yeah. know, it, it makes tolerable. playing a game tolerable. You don't yeah. have to get out the headphones to play yeah. a game. Yeah. Well, there you have it. The Nexus 10, it, boy, it was just, everybody was raving over, especially when they saw the specs for the yeah. screen. I've, I've never seen such a high-res screen. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's nice. sounds like it's a nice screen. Pros yeah, and cons. So pros are that it's fast and responsive. Um, it's got the very high resolution screen, which is kind of a, an, an only item in the Android marketplace right now. Yeah. Um, and it's really the best Android tablet experience, you know, being the Nexus experience, getting the updates, getting everything out. Um, you know that this device is going to be around and be right. updated, uh, which you have to worry about with other devices. Uh, so you get all the great features like the user switching and all of that. Cons. Uh, cons are that it's got no memory slot at all. So no upgradeability. No upgradeability. Uh, you're also lacking any 3G and 4G options, which is something that I would really like to have. Yeah. Um, and there's limited accessories. So Google's given you a, a little Pogo charging dock on the bottom. Oh, um, it doesn't use the micro USB? It, it does use micro USB. So you've got your micro USB. The issue with the micro USB is that it can take about six hours to charge if it's on. <laughs> From empty, it's not a, very a lot long of wattage time. on that. It's not a lot. If yeah. you're actually using it while you're charging it, you're barely going to get any charge by the time oh, okay. you go. So you want to use the dock. Um, so you want to use pins. this connector, except yeah. they don't sell anything for it. Oh, so you know you, you would want to you would want to use it. You <laughs> would want to get, get a, a higher amperage charger or a keyboard <laughs> dock or or a desktop dock or yeah. or something. But there's just no accessories available for it, and uh, that's a little disappointing. Well, you spent your own money for it. Now, in hindsight, buy, try, don't buy. In hindsight, I'm still going to give it a buy. Okay. Uh, if you want an Android tablet, it's certainly a buy. Uh, I can't really think of any other Android tablet I'd rather have. Um, I would rather have this with 3G and 4G and with a micro SD slot. So I may make the trade-off to trade it for a 3G or 4G Samsung, but, um, you know, it's, it's You know really what I'm nice. intrigued by is the Chromebook Pixel that'll run Android apps, it'll run right. Linux, and it'll, of course, run Chrome OS. Uh, similar screen resolution. Right. Of course, it's bigger, it's heavier, and it's got a keyboard. It's bigger, it's, a it's heavier, and it's, and it's a more premium feel, and that's... that's it's also one three times thing more that, expensive. You know, it's, Four times. It's something that I hope carries across into yeah. the next Nexus because yeah. this is built by Samsung. and Really? That's not an Acer or an Asus it's, or somebody it's not, else? It's actually okay. got Samsung's branding all over it, the charger, the Oh, so it is. Back. Okay, yeah. Um, and because of that, it kind of has a little bit of a... It, feels, it looks like a Samsung. It's pretty solid, but every once in a while when you kind of mm. grab it in the back, it'll kind of yeah. creak or crack or just kind of pop. Um, so it's... It's not as high end as the Chromebook Pixel right. uh, engineer. But it is the highest end Android tablet out there. So yes. for that reason alone. Russell Tamany, exponentia.com. X P O N E T I A dot com. X P O N E N T I A. E N T I A. There's my awesome two thousand two website.
<laughs> you know, it does everything you need and then some. Yes. <laughs> and so do you. We're so glad to have you. Thank you, Russell. Thank you. Uh, coming up in just a bit, I'm going to take a walk over here because uh, we've got a Dell tablet. Kind of want to look at the Windows 8 uh, side of the equation. And I am going to compare the new Roku 3 to this WTD uh, TV Play. But first, a reminder to the postal professionals out there. If you do a lot of mailing, you got to go to Stamps.com right now and sign up. Because Stamps.com means you don't have to go to the post office anymore. That waste of time where you go drive, find parking, get in line, get stamps. You don't have to do it anymore. You don't even have to do it to mail packages. Everything you do right now at the post office, you could do right from your desk without ever getting up. Using your computer, your printer. You don't need a postage meter. <coughs> Excuse me. You don't need special links. You just need stamps.com. In fact, you even get discounts you can't get at the post office. Up to 21% on express mail. Up to 15% on priority mail. Stamps.com is a fantastic way to get your mailing done. You can put it right on the envelope. It'll pick up the address from your QuickBooks, your address book, your uh, eBay or Etsy or PayPal uh, website. It'll fill out the forms if you're doing international mailing. If you're doing priority or express mail, it'll send an email to the recipient with the tracking information, all automatically quickly saving you time, saving you money. Now, you see that great no-risk trial offer on the front? My friends, we can do better than that. If you click the microphone and enter before you buy, you'll have a chance for a $110 bonus offer, including $55 in free postage. You get the beautiful USB scale that we love so very much. This uh, silvery, shiny USB scale, so you always have exactly the right postage. You'll get a, a, a supply kit and a four-week trial of Stamps.com, all just because you used the offer code before you buy. Special deal. Don't tell anybody. That's just for you before you buy, viewers. Stamps.com. It's the pro way to mail. All right. Follow me now, Brian Burnett, because I'm going to stand up. I am going to walk. I'm going over here to say hello to Alex Gumpel. Whoa, scared him <laughs> in his lab coat. Hey, Alex, how are you? Hey, Leah, how's it going? So uh, Alex is kind of a Windows 8 fan. Uh, sometimes. What do you think of Windows 8, honestly? I mean, you... Uh, it, it, it can be frustrating, can't it? Yeah, yeah. Some some things are good, some are bad. I generally stick to the desktop on most things, As but on, a tablet, on tablets, it's nice. Yeah, so, well, then that's a question. So right. you have a Surface RT. It, uh, what I like is that I would rather have all my machines running the same thing, using the same login, so it's all Makes connected sense. together, and I could still run tablet apps on the desktop if I need to and get to my stuff. Right. But then you have to still deal with Metro stuff on the desktop, which is always kind of hit or miss. Right. You have a Windows 8 phone. Unfortunately, the same apps don't work on RT, right. Windows Although 8, and Pro. Right, although I think they're working on that. They so are that working might, on that. Um, might... So you do yeah. have a Surface RT, right? I do. It's and right you have right. a Surface Pro. I do not. You do not. No. This would be, a, an, a, this would be instead of the Surface Pro, this is the Dell? No. No, this is an RT this tablet. This is an RT tablet. Ah. That surprised me, too. And so this that's is actually the XPS 10. There haven't been many third-party RP RT tablets. No, there haven't. And and that's actually my biggest complaint is it's RT, which means it's kind of competing with the Surface. Right. But it's not quite as nice as the Surface in hardware-wise. You put it down a little bit so we can look at it because we're looking but, over yeah, your shoulder you here. Um, it's a good-looking screen. Yeah, it's nice. It's an IPS screen. Um, it's nothing. Which just... means that the viewing angle is very good. In fact, as you see, as I tilt it. Why you can right, look yeah. at it almost uh, almost obliquely and it still looks pretty good. So it's got it's an ARM processor. It's got a 1.5 gigahertz Snapdragon S4. It's got 32 or 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage, so it's not an SSD. Uh, it's uh, what's about, the difference? SSDs are faster, I think. Okay, I e don't actually know. Yeah, okay. it's just flash chips or a drive right. component. Got I guess it. I'm not right. sure exactly. Okay. I know that the Surface Pro has an SSD while the Surface RT has the eMMC. Got it. Got Whatever. It. Uh, it's 1.4 pounds, so it's just a little bit lighter than the Surface. Um, it's interesting when you compare the two. It's also got a slightly smaller screen. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's about the same size with the bezel. It's got a larger bezel than the Surface, but right. Surface is 10.6. This is 10.1. Um, and, and in terms of speed, do they feel that they feel yeah, they're, they're identical? In, in they really sense, are. Yeah. In fact, the hardware is the same, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Um, well, this is a Nvidia Tegra. Well, this is okay. a Snapdragon. Okay. But they're Very almost similar. identical. Okay. Um, so uh, now, one thing about this though is that it comes with this handy thing: a keyboard dock. It comes with it. it uh, actually, no. It, it, well, some SKUs do. So you can okay. either get it with or without it. Again, depending this is on how much, much like the window, the, uh, win the Microsoft product where you can buy it with or without a keyboard. Right. Except this is actually a keyboard dock, it's not a real just a floppy keyboard. thing. So yeah. if you, you know turn it into tablet or a laptop, oh, that's mode like here, a laptop. It's actually more ah. like a laptop than the Surface would be. Pretty solid click. And it's, yes, yeah, it's solid, and, Wait it's, a and you can have it on your lap. It almost fell right over. You got to be careful well, there. It's, it's it's nice and sturdy. It's got a nice clasp. 
Yeah, but it but it seems like it's just a little bit of it's weight on here. It's just yeah. <laughs> but okay, so do it there. Now it's now it's okay. Little, good. There we go. That's yeah, better. Much better. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. but I mean that's that's what you get when you have that's all the weight in the screen there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now with the dock, you also get two USB ports on the sides. You got a micro or mini HDMI port, and it comes with a nice mini HDMI to regular HDMI dongle. Uh, it's got integrated speakers in it okay. um, in the dock, so you get a little bit of volume boost if you're using that. Yeah. Um, the keyboard is ninety. 2% full size, so it's just smaller than full size. You know, given that this is a tablet and it's not really as big as a laptop screen, that's pretty good. You're getting a decent size. Yeah, I still with. have some trouble with it. But yeah. yeah, and actually, the the biggest problem with this is the trackpad. Um, it's a it's a nice trackpad with gestures, but there's no palm rejection. So if you're typing, oh, that's a real and, problem. And your palm hits the thing, and your cursor is somewhere else, you're going to start typing <laughs> another paragraph, and it's, it's like really that annoying. Yeah. That, but hopefully, that's could be fixed with a software. software update. That's and software, yeah. So that's not actually that bad. Okay. Um, but so one thing about this, unlike the Surface, is that um, the speakers are actually, let me actually get the camera first. Uh, it's got a 5 megapixel camera on the rear and a 2 megapixel camera on the front, so you can get some nice group shots there like that. That looks really creepy. Let's not look at that <laughs> No, I kind of like it, actually. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, oh, and there's also, um, there's no LTE in this, but apparently that's coming soon. So... What do you mean coming soon? That would be another SKU, though. Another SKU, yeah. That, that, has, that has a SIM one. slot in it for, right. for So LTE. if you want an LTE, wait and uh, get the LTE right. version. Uh, okay. They say it's coming soon. Right. We'll Whatever see about that. that. Means, yeah. um, it's also got micro USB for um, charging, trickle charging, but also uh, it comes with a dongle to full USB. Um, but unlike the Nexus 10, uh, this does support storage. The on-the-go or OTG capability. Yeah, yeah. I guess so, yeah. That's what Samsung calls it. Probably like, I, you know, Dell has I, I plugged the USB before. drive and it worked, so... Yeah. <laughs> that's all we really. That's care. all I care about. Yeah. Um, so one thing about this um, that's actually m way better than the Surface is mm -hmm. that the speakers are pretty loud. So we play some music here. Um, you didn't like the audio on the uh, Surface. It, the Surface is just really quiet. Yeah. So okay, that's average. But now if we turn it up, oops, turn it up. Oh yeah. It's not a really loud song, but you could. It's good, and if um, it's tinny, but it's if you're. Um, it's interesting how our standards have changed. You know because. Yeah. Russell was saying how, how good the sound was out of his tablet. Tablet sound to me, just like phone sound, always sounds kind of Exactly, but it's good for you know, on it's Skype loud. or whatever. But yeah. now we plug it in. Oh, it's give coming it. out of this. Yep. Nope. Give it a second. Oh, did it switch over? Yeah, okay. Well, that's interesting. So there's another set of speakers on here. I don't think it's switched over. It's supposed to switch over. There it goes. There it goes. So you get, you get some good volume with that. It's well, at not, least I recognize the Beach Boys now. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, you couldn't without that. So, I mean, it's you're not going to want to listen to music on it, but you know what? Same thing with the with the books, Nexus, you YouTube know, videos, games. That's all good, and it's and that's what the Surface really lacks is, right. is loud volume. Right. So that's that's nice. Um, let's see. Uh, so it's in now. It, uh, it does come with um, if you're new to Windows 8, Windows RT, uh, Dell's provides a nice uh, getting started tutorial app. You, know, you learn all your swipes and gestures and whatnot, but if you're if you know what you're doing, then you don't need that. But it's a, it's a nice Does thing. Dell load this up, or is it all it comes clean? with that, and it comes with a Dell Shop thing. Um, that's nice because I've seen it. a lot of Windows 8 machines even that come with a lot. Oh yeah, of other that stuff. that um, that Acer I had came with a lot yeah, of stuff. Loaded. Yeah, loaded. Yeah. So this is nice, it, and it comes with Skype. But thank that's, you, Dell. You know, thank you, fine. Dell. Well, you're gonna install Skype probably anyway. Right. right? Yeah. Um, so that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, now it uh, price is four forty nine to six seventy nine ninety nine. So it's roughly the, the, the same as the Surface, it's isn't it? Fifty dollars cheaper than the Surface for the wow. for the base thirty two gig model. And when you add the, the keyboard, keyboard, how much is the keyboard? Uh, keyboard adds another hundred bucks somewhere. Very in there. similar uh, to the keyboard yeah, on the yes, Surface. So it's. So the real question, well, let's do pros and cons, and I'll ask you the real question, which is should you buy this or the Microsoft product? Pros and cons. Okay, so pros and cons. So pros, it's light and comfortable. You know, you hold that, it's nice. Oh yeah, it's made. Oh, and oh, so one thing actually about this is it's got the same styling as the other XPS laptops and tablets. It doesn't so, feel maybe as uh, robust as exactly. the Surface. Exactly, that's actually one of my cons is that uh, it's creaky. Yeah, you, I can you even kind of feel twist it and torque, torque it, and it's, yeah. it makes some creaky sounds, yeah. and it doesn't feel quite as solid Surface as this. Surface is square, but it feels more unibody. But it's you can't twist it. Yeah, yeah. It's that's this that is solid. Type, that's that magnesium thing that they're doing. Right, and yeah. it's not that big of a deal. I mean, it's but it's it still feels nice in your hand. It's got it's got the soft touch rubbery. Coding on the back. This is a physical button. It's got a physical Windows button as opposed to the the glass passive one. button yeah. there. Um, so back to pros and cons. So pros, it's it's light and comfortable. It's got the nice IPS screen, um, and because it's Windows RT, it's got Office included. That's nice. Yeah, but so, so does every Windows RT machine. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, an, it's an RT machine. But if it, if it were an Atom-based machine, it would not come would with not. that. You'd have to That's pay right. extra. Yeah. Um, so cons, it's Windows RT. 
I don't understand Windows RT and what the point is right now. You know, where does it belong in the spectrum of it's, things? Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. It's well, you can't like, really blame this for being Windows RT. Well, <laughs> it's an if, RT if, if Dell had made this with an Atom processor, like they have, Dell then it would be Windows 8. Dell makes the Latitude 10, right. which is almost identical to this, but with an Atom processor. Right. But it doesn't work with the dock because it's got different connectors on the back. If they had uh, just made that one thing with Atom, it would have been a much better so tablet. So I, I guess think. really the question isn't what I thought it was going to be, which is should I buy this or the Surface RT? It's should I buy this or a Windows 8 tablet? Right. Um, so I'm giving it a try because of that. Okay. Um, so and just a little story. So recently I bought my dad his first new computer in a long time, and I bought him an HP Envy X2. That's the it's the same kind of thing as this tablet that detaches, but it's an Atom machine. I, I, I was all right with the styling and the, and the hardware of that. I w if this came with uh, with an Atom chip, I would have much rather gotten him this you would have than the HP. Because I, really, I like that this. as a Windows 8 machine. Exactly. I would not buy a RT. Windows RT machine because yeah. you can't run any of the old stuff. Right. But I like this better than the current Stamps uh, kind of hybrid laptops or uh, tablets. Let me ask you this. If you, if you said, I'm going to buy Windows RT, it would be a buy. If I was going to buy Windows RT... I'd still go with the surface. Go with the surface. Yeah. All right. So it's it's a try. It's nice. Try it out. It's di and like like a lot of these Windows 8 machines that are there's all over the map now. It really depends right. on what you need. You can't buy them all. You can't not buy them all. So you just see what you need. The Flowmaster Alex Gumpel, our Windows expert. So Thank you. Sure. <laughs> I just nominated yeah. you. Nobody else wants to do it. Thank you, Alex. I appreciate it. Welcome. I am going to show you the Roku. Are you ready? This is the new Roku 3. Just came out. I ordered it immediately, and uh, it was delivered to me a few days after the order. $99 for the Roku 3, and I'll show you a couple of the of the differences in the new uh, Roku 3. First of all, you can see as Burke slides it in, it's small. It has uh, a sim simple back uh, plane with only really three... Uh, cables. It's got an HDMI cable. That's right, just HDMI. So you can only use this with an HDMI capable television. An Ethernet jack, although Wi Fi is built in. You have your choice of Ethernet or Wi Fi. If you have uh, the capability, Ethernet is infinitely better in terms of performance, I must say. And uh, DC in. And that's it. It is a small little puck. In fact, when I, I took this out of my TV system this morning to uh, bring it in, I accidentally took the Apple TV because they looked so much alike. In fact, the second part of the Roku, its remote control is almost as big as the puck. <laughs> but the remote control is the biggest difference in the new Roku, because if you look at it carefully, you'll see on the side, there is a headphone jack. The new Roku 3 has a feature that I think is a killer feature. Now, it comes with earbuds. I didn't use it with the uh, purple Roku earbuds, even though they're color coordinated. I actually plugged in some very good, high quality uh, headphones into this and I was thrilled to note there's no latency the sound is excellent I was getting great deep bass I was getting a lot of uh, a loud sound it works exactly as you would hope for this becomes <laughs> all you need to have wireless audio on your television set so if you're looking for a TV you can listen to in the bedroom while your spouse sleeps, I'm going to make sure my mom has this. She's a little hard of hearing, sometimes turns the TV up a little too loud for the rest of us. Now she can watch TV and turn it up as loud as she wants. The Roku remote has volume controls on it, which actually control the volume on the TV set as well as on the remote control. So that is a great convenience. Let's take a look at what's new. Oh, one more thing that's not new, but you might have noticed in the previous Roku, you, you got the A and B buttons on here. This is a gaming device with an accelerometer in it, and you can play Angry Birds and other games using this remote control of the A, B buttons and its positioning in space. I don't do it very much, and I have to say, when I tried it with earlier Rokus, I found that they were sort of underpowered to play games. Um, you can't say this Roku 3 is underpowered. They've definitely enhanced the processor in the Roku, and it is very, very capable. Let's show you the uh, new Roku interface. This is going to propagate, I think, to all the Roku devices soon. The one thing I don't like about it is that a lot of the real estate here is dedicated to an ad. So this is an ad for Hulu Plus, taking up about a third of the screen real estate. There's a Roku channel store. Uh, these are my channels. You can add the channel store. has a huge number of thousands of channels, all kinds of stuff you can watch. Um, including some interesting apps. Plex is on here, for instance. So if you like Plex and you want to watch content, remember how excited uh, IAS was to be able to uh, use the WDTV to play content from the rest of his network. Well, you can use Plex to do this. Unlike the WDTV, this does have Amazon Instant Video. In fact, the only thing the Roku 3 doesn't have 
is iTunes. Here's the games uh, section. You can see uh, a lot of, uh, you know, fun games on here. I don't know if, uh, you know, if you want a gaming device, get an Xbox. Get a PlayStation 3. I don't think the Roku is well suited to this, but I guess for some very casual uh, gaming, this might be okay. I really like the Roku for playing back video, and it excels at this. The new Roku is faster than it's ever been. Um, it, 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 the HD TV is excellent. You can get uh, on, on uh, uh, places like Amazon and Vudu, you can get a 1080p video through your Roku, and it works great. Notice there's this new thing, and I'm going to show you, because I asked Tony, I said, hey, does anybody have a movie? Tony said, yeah, I got some stuff on here, some TV on this USB key. This Roku 3 has a USB port. I'm going to stick a little, I've never, I haven't done this before. This will be a first. I'll stick some uh, a USB key in there, and I'll launch the U Roku USB media player, and I should be able to. We'll see. I don't know. I, Tony just said, I don't know what's on here. <laughs> You're a brave man. Let's select it and browse. It's scanning the drive. Entourage Season 8. Shall we, uh, shall we play a little Entourage? Disc 1. It's an MP4. Let's play it back. It's un unauth content disabled. Tony, where did you get this? But the sound quality is superb. So, okay. That's actually, I'm glad we did that. Because now you know you need to have, obviously, uncopy protected content on your USB device for that to work. But it does play. <laughs> Where'd you get that, Tony? Was that a rip? That was an HDCPR. It's an HDCPR, I understand. But where did you get the content? You found it in a hotel. Okay, it was on the floor there. Uh, there's lots of stuff besides television stations you can subscribe to. Now, Time Warner has an app on here that lets you watch live television. I'm not a Time Warner subscriber, so I can't do it. And we just heard a rumor that ABC is making an app for iOS, but I wouldn't be surprised to see this on the Roku. This is the ultimate cord-cutting device, I think, uh, going forward when you, when you see networks. There's HBO Go on here. Uh, I don't have it installed because my content provider, my cable company, Xfinity, does not allow uh, HBO Go signups on the Roku. It's, it, it does on the iOS, but for some reason they're afraid of Roku. Uh, however, let's go to Netflix and I'll show you. It works very well. The quality is excellent. In fact, these headphones are so good that when I was playing lower quality content, I could hear the digital artifacting. It was really, really annoying. Uh, so that, was a, that, that actually is a problem. You're actually hearing really good quality uh, audio. Should we uh, play a little Battlestar Galactica, see how it uh, plays back? This is, again, going to work via Wi-Fi. It's not your fault, Tony. It's the cable we're using, or or the TV we're using. Maybe I should just unplug this. Maybe that'll make it better. No, I think this is the cable we're using. Is this not an HDCP uh, compliant cable? What are we going into? Oh! We're not going directly into the TV, ladies and gentlemen. The engineering staff has set this up because they're pirates. They've actually, because they're not pirates, they didn't understand that you have to go directly into an HDCP uh, device, which actually is the case. We shall see Battlestar Galactica. There we go. There we go. Let me press play. All right. So, uh, as you can see, the quality is excellent. It's HDMI, 1080p, playback is smooth. This is a, I don't know because they don't tell you what the, uh, what the hardware is in here. I'm sure somebody will do, maybe the iFix will do a teardown and we'll find out. But it's clearly a much faster processor, maybe even more memory uh, on this because it plays back beautifully. There are more than 600 channels, according to Roku. I've seen uh, databases of thousands of channels that play back on the Roku. I love the, uh, let's do the pros and cons. I, the pros, I love the in-ear, the, you know, the headphone jack on the remote control. It works beautifully. Uh, it has uh, excellent video quality, uh, HDMI, beautiful streaming quality, which will, by the way, work better on Ethernet than it will on Wi-Fi because Ethernet just is a better way of connecting. Um, it does have a micro SD memory expansion slot. We'll see how that gets used. I don't know. I guess you can put uh, movies on it. It does support USB and USB video. Shall we, see, shall we try uh, Tony's uh, stick? See if that works now? Let's see it. Let's see. Maybe we can watch some Entourage. That'd be fun. It plays back uh, MKV, MP4, uh, a variety of files. 
you know, the kind of files you might have. There is a remote app for iOS and Android devices. And I love it that they come, uh, they have, they offer a Roku USB media player. Let's just try this one more time. It's going to load the content off the USB device. You could plug a big hard drive on here, uh, USB thumb drive, and playback stuff. I think that's a real, a real positive. Let's see now. All right, there we go. We're stealing content like a pro. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he found it on the floor in a hotel. It's not his fault, okay? Look at the quality, though. It's playing back beautifully. No hesitation. Uh, absolute great video quality. Uh, if there's a con, it's that it doesn't play iTunes. It's the one thing it doesn't play. That's not App That's not a, a Roku's fault. It's Apple won't let it. But it does everything else. It does it beautifully. Absolutely a buy. If you're a Roku fan, you'll recognize the value of the Roku 3. If you've never tried a Roku, uh, it's, in my opinion, the best set-top box out there. And I love it that I can take my USB content, plug it into the Roku, and uh, play it instantly just like that. So, a definite buy for the Roku 3. I was going to show you, the, the, there are some... Oh, I, one con I didn't mention. It does not come with an HDMI cable. You'll need to buy one. They're just a few bucks at monoprice.com. Roku sells them as well. Uh, they also sell a mounting kit, which is kind of cool. So, if you've got a, a TV and you want to make it into a smart TV, the mounting kit allows you to mount the Roku uh, behind the TV, on the rails uh, of the TV, very easily. It's got a, a adapters and uh, connectors for a variety of different situations. I think that's a great idea, too, the mounting kit, so that you can hide the Roku, small as it is, behind the TV. Nobody will know you have a dumb TV. You suddenly have a very smart TV. Wow, did we have some fun today. Thanks to Shannon Morse, Ayaz Akhtar, Tony Wang, Russell uh, Tammany, Alex Gumpel for their reviews. Thank you for joining us. Oh, this is that episode. I better pause that. <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> one of my favorites, though. It's, like, it's quite an, an enjoyable uh, episode. If, <laughs> if you want to email us with your questions, your comments, your suggestions for stuff you'd like us to review, it's byb at twit.tv. We do the show every Tuesday afternoon, 4 p.m. Pacific, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 2300 UTC. Please watch live. You can see all sorts of fun things happen that we probably edit out, right? later on in the show. But if not, you can always get the uh, edited versions, the audio or video on-demand downloads at twit.tv slash BYB or wherever better podcasts are stored. We also have a YouTube channel where all the reviews go. It's youtube.com slash before you buy. On behalf of Shannon and the gang, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Before You Buy. Let me just watch the rest of this scene. It's so good. I